Hello, welcome back to Austin and the University of Texas School of Law. We hope this virtual return to campus brings back good memories. You'll find some things have changed since you left the 40 acres. We've built new programs and buildings and welcomed new faculty and of course, new students. But some things are exactly as you remember them, our unwavering spirit and our drive for excellence and justice. Let's start at Towns Hall, home to our big first year classrooms, our student lounge and cafe. Towns Hall has a huge portrait gallery with paintings of past deans and illustrious alumni, such as Secretary of State James Baker, Senator Kay Bailey Hutchison, Texas Supreme Court Chief Justice Wallace Jefferson, and immediate past president of our alumni association, Arlise Upton Key. Down the hall are the six first year classrooms. The first year class is typically divided into four sections of between 65 and 75 students. Texas Law has 95 full-time faculty with over 125 listed areas of specialty. That's a 10 to 1 student-faculty ratio. Towns Hall is also a hub of extracurricular activity, housing the offices of many of our student organizations, of which there are more than 40. Our affinity groups include CHILSA, TMLS, APALSA, the Asian Pacific American Law Student Association, Outlaw, the LGBTQ Plus Alliance, and the Women's Law Caucus. Texas Law has 13 law journals, and most have offices on the fourth floor of towns. Texas Law students also enjoy spending time in George's Cafe and the Tom Clark Lounge. George's, named for George Fleming, class of 1971, offers breakfast and lunch, and plenty of space to stretch out. The Tom Clark Lounge, named for U.S. Supreme Court Justice Tom Clark, class of 1922, features a pool table, a Starbucks coffee and snack kiosk, vending machine, and plenty of space. Steps away from the lounge is the Sussman Godfrey Atrium, the main common area of our school. Here we also pay tribute to one of the most important figures in our history, and in the history of higher education, Heman Sweat, a civil rights pioneer. Just outside the atrium, you'll find Eduardo Rodriguez Way, named for a longtime alumnus leader and supporter of Texas law. For over 20 years, alumni and their families have gathered here for Eduardo's annual tailgate extravaganza. We're now in Jones Hall, home of the Tarleton Law Library and the Sussman Academic Center. Tarleton is one of the largest academic law libraries in the country. It has a staff of 32, including 10 librarians with JDs. Above the library is the Sussman Academic Center, housing more than 90 faculty offices as well as classrooms. A signature part of Texas law is experiential learning. That happens in the Connolly Center for Justice, or CCJ. We have 15 clinics and multiple internships. Students can work on immigration cases, criminal defense cases, capital punishment cases, and entrepreneurship projects, among many others. Students can observe live trials in our Eidman courtroom. CCJ is also home to the Richard and Ginny Mitoff Pro Bono Program, where Texas law students use their developing legal skills to address legal needs in the community and build a commitment to service. In fact, 90% of this year's entering class pledged to provide at least 50 hours of pro bono service before graduation. Upstairs is our Career Services Office which hosts more than 500 law firm offices and organizations from New York, Los Angeles, and Washington, D.C., and everywhere in Texas to recruit our students. In fact, recent graduates practice in 137 cities, 41 states and D.C., and six countries. Texas law also boasts one of the premier judicial clerkship programs in the nation. 40 graduates obtain judicial clerkships every year in federal and state courts across the country and Texas Law is one of the top 12 law schools to place clerks on the U.S. Supreme Court. On behalf of the Texas Law Alumni Association, welcome back to the law school and happy reunion. You can always visit our website for a more in-depth look at your law school. And we hope to see you on campus soon. Hook 'em horns. All right, wonderful graduates. Welcome back, even virtually. I am greeting you in my capacity as the world's luckiest dean, 
dean of your law school, Ward Farnsworth. Now, if you're watching this, you might have graduated from this place 50 or 60 years ago, maybe five or 10 years ago. So I'm gonna to try to talk about things that have changed over the years, things that haven't, things that'll be familiar to some of you and things that some of you will find new. The first thing I have to do is just comment on what a year it's been. It's really been a year of extraordinary challenges to this community, just as it has been, I'm quite sure, in whatever community you're in, professionally and personally. But I must tell you, I am so impressed and so grateful for the way this law school community has responded to these conditions. Overall, there have been countless instances of students stepping up for each other, being helped by faculty, and being helped by our alumni. Unlike a lot of law schools, we've continued to offer a lot of courses in person, as well as remotely, always giving students the option of being there in person with mask on or taking the class from home. Even the indefatigable Stanley Johansson insisted on teaching in person. This has allowed us to provide our students with some very special experiences this year that students at other schools haven't had the same chance to have. In general, our goal has been to step up for our students at this time and give them an experience better than they could get anywhere else. We gave every one of our incoming first year students an assignment to a faculty mentor, so no faculty member had more than four or five students assigned to them. And every student had a faculty member who was keeping an eye on them and who they were getting to know, even if they couldn't come hobnob up at the podium at the front of the room after class. In addition to that, we've had alumni stepping up for students as mentors. Some of you uh, have done that. We've had special effort made by our student affairs office and by our career services office to help students through the strangeness of the job market under these conditions. It's been a tough year, but it's been a year when the school has really, I think, shown its great strengths. And I'm very thankful to all of you for the generosity of time and resources that so many of you have shown to help us get through this period. Now, to talk a little more generally about recent developments at the law school. If you haven't been here in a long time, there's some differences in what you'd see physically and some differences in what you'd see the students learning and doing. Let me start with the learning and doing. Compared to a few decades ago, one thing you'd notice is the school's smaller. So many of you were here when there were five or even 600 students in a graduating class. These days, the number's closer to 300. That's really not a number driven by a desire to be any one size or the other. It's a number driven by our insistence just on being excellent and having the highest standards that we've ever had for admissions so that we continue to turn out graduates who are at the very top of the profession and talent, graduates who hopefully all of you are very eager to hire. It's also a place now where we give more individual attention to those students. They're all in first year societies and mentor groups. They're all assigned second and third year students as mentors. They're all taking classes on legal writing in groups of 25 or 30, all taught by full-time professional writing instructors, usually our own graduates, teaching them how to do that thing that I consider the very most important skill of all. Most of our students take a clinic before they graduate. Some of you had the pleasure of doing that before you graduated. Some of you went here at a time before we had so many clinics, but we now have 16, the most recent of which is part of a new First Amendment center we've opened. That's a very important thing to me the ability to engage in free speech with one another about the hardest topics, I consider that one of the most pressing issues of our times and something that I want all of our graduates to specialize in. One of the projects of our First Amendment Center is a clinic on religious liberty that gives our students a chance to represent plaintiffs who are in schools or prisons from all different sorts of backgrounds and their beliefs or non-beliefs, representing them in their quest for religious liberty. It's a new chance for our students to learn how to do things that are really going to make a difference for them when they get out into the world and it's time to be a lawyer. All right, if you were in the building, walking around, what would you see that's different? Well, for one thing, the Sussman Godfrey Atrium at the center of the law school is a little different than you may remember it. Some of you went here before the atrium existed, but most of you have seen it. And you may remember it for its wood paneling, so redolent of a 1970s rec room. Uh, we phased out that paneling and instead of exposed what was once the exterior wall of Towns Hall, had it uh, blasted and clean and it's now very beautiful. The, the, the atrium in general is now very well lit and is a beehive of student activity and socializing, which you can come enjoy seeing any day of the week during the school year. In addition, 
imagine walking from the student lounge or the Sheffield Massey room to the first year classrooms. Imagine walking outdoors through a breezeway through which I'm sure all of you passed many, many dozens of times. When you go through that breezeway, there are spaces to your right and to your left. And historically, those spaces are a great location that's never been used as much by students as we all would have liked. So thanks to wonderfully generous gifts from the Patman family and the D. Kelly family, we're renovating those spaces and turning them into magnificent areas for student life with slats that'll keep it shady and fans provided by the big ass fan company, which I'm assured is very aptly named. We're very excited to have these spaces uh, available for use this fall. And if you want to know one silver lining in this whole dreadful pandemic has been the chance to do some very loud construction at the law school in these spaces without disturbing anybody. Above all, our goal was to make this the best place in the world to be a law student. That's our aspiration all the time. And what I really want you to know is what a difference you, our graduates, make in our ability to deliver on that promise. When you went to law school here, I know it was less expensive than it is now. But I also know that most of you can comfortably say you got the greatest deal in the history of American legal education. And our goal is to be able to keep saying that. Tuition's more expensive than it used to be. And the state provides a much smaller share of it than it used to. Nevertheless, in-state tuition here is still about half of what tuition is at most of our peer law schools. And that enables us to bring extraordinary students to this law school who could have gone elsewhere. And it enables us to position those students to go off and do great things with their lives because they are not encumbered with the kind of crushing debt that students at so many other law schools struggle with. That to me is the center of our mission providing our students with a first-rate education and elite opportunities without top-tier debt. And I just want to thank all of you who have helped us make that dream come true for so many of our students. All right, you've heard enough from me. I want to give you a chance to hear from some of the other leaders who do so much to make the law school so great. So in a minute, you're going to hear from Matthew Lay, our Assistant Dean for Admissions, from Meg Clifford, who helps run our pro bono programs, from Kathleen Overly, who directs our judicial clerkship programs, and from Professor Bobby Chesney, who's our Associate Dean for Academic Affairs. These are amazing colleagues who do extraordinary things for our students all the time, and I am really looking forward to the chance for you to hear from them. Enjoy. Hello, alumni. Happy reunion to all of you, wherever you are joining us from. I'm Matthew Lay, Texas Law's Assistant Dean for Admissions and Financial Aid. My job is to make sure that every class of new students we welcome to Texas Law is as excellent as you and your classmates. You're probably wondering how admissions are going during this unusual year of a pandemic, economic uncertainty, and no small amount of social unrest. Well, the short answer is we're doing great. In fact, this year we've seen well over 7,700 applications. Is that a lot, you might be wondering? Yes, it is a lot. It's a record, in fact, by a lot. That's a 39% increase over last year and more than 1,800 applications, more than our second highest year just a couple of years ago. People really want to go to law school and the best and brightest students in Texas and elsewhere want to come here. Now I should tell you, applications are up everywhere and that's great news for law schools. Lots of wonderful qualified applicants. Nationwide, there are 21% more applicants this year, submitting about 33% more applications. That's part of a long-standing trend in law school applications. And here's how that trend looks at Texas Law. In 2016, five years ago, the last time you had your reunion, we had 4,400 applications. I'll do the math for you, since most of you went to law school, me included, to not do math. That's a 73% increase in our applicant pool. Why did that happen? Well, as I said, there are some national trends. No one can be completely sure why applications are up so much, but one popular theory is that politics and government are energizing people from all different viewpoints and backgrounds to get involved. People understand better than ever how important lawyers are and the different kinds of career paths available to people with law degrees, both in private practice and in public service. But here at our law school, it isn't only about trends we have a strategic and aggressive recruitment plan. Let me tell you a little bit about the big differences in law school recruitment since most of you are applying to law school. 
The biggest difference by far is that today's admissions offices are highly professionalized. We don't just sit back and wait for applications to show up. We've got a staff that works to increase high quality applications and then works to steward admitted students through the process of choosing the law school that's right for them and their career goals. From the way that we recruit students at law fairs, invite students to sit on classes, tour the law school, and how all of our communications are with students, everything is intentional and personal. We try to understand the applicant journey from the time they apply to the time that they are admitted. We have a team of law school ambassadors on staff among the students and with you, alumni, working with aspiring law students, connect them with faculty teaching in the area that they think they'd like to study, with students who share backgrounds or interests, and with alumni practicing in the fields and places that they want to practice. We make ourselves available to every admitted student to get them answers to the questions they have. This also helps us better understand when a student is a great fit for Texas law and sometimes when they aren't. Here's another thing about admissions today. It's about building through a holistic review combined with data analysis, a full class that is going to make for a great community. We like to say that we're the best place in the world to be a law student. A big part of that is going to law school with a class that will make you better and with whom you build the deep relationships and networks that are going to be decisive in your career path and personal success. Our decision making is also more data driven than it has ever been before. While we still rely heavily on experience and intuition, inclusion of data-driven strategies has helped us understand applicant behavior and the trends in a more nuanced fashion. This is essential to understanding where to pour our energies and how to make scholarship awards. Law school is a lot more expensive than it used to be. Many of you may remember when Texas law was just a few thousand dollars a year. For some of you, it was just a few hundred dollars a year. Now, we're still a bargain. For in-state tuition, we're at at least $20,000 a year less than any other top law school in the country, but it's no longer inexpensive. Scholarship and aid are absolutely essential to getting the best students to Texas law and making sure they don't go elsewhere. On behalf of everyone who works with me in admissions, I want to say thank you. Alumni are critical and essential for what we do. Your great careers and lives are the first thing we tell prospective students about. What does it mean to go to Texas law? You need only look at our alumni and their success to know the answer. More than that, you come to events, you talk to applicants, and you support the scholarships that help us recruit. Thank you. Have a great reunion and enjoy learning a little bit more about how the law school of today is the same place you loved, but with lots of new and exciting developments to keep us great and keep us competitive. How come? Hello and happy reunion. My name is Meg Clifford, and like most of you watching, I'm a Texas Law alumna, a proud member of the class of 2012. I'm looking forward to my 10th reunion next year. In fact, I liked law school so much, I work here. And I want to tell you about the program I work in, the law school's pro bono program. Our pro bono work is an amazing part of the student experience, and alumni are a huge part of it. First of all, the name of our program is the Midoff Pro Bono Program named for Richard and Ginny Midoff. Richard is a member of the class of 1971. Speaking of pro bono work, Richard is also a co-chair of his class committee, so I want to wish a very happy 50th reunion to Richard and his whole class. And over a decade ago, when we were just starting to formalize pro bono opportunities for students, Harry Reisner of the class of 1962 gave us our start. Thanks, Harry. Okay. Let me tell you about the Midoff Pro Bono Program and why it's important to me and to Texas law. The first thing to know is that over 70% of our students participate in pro bono, and over 40% do at least 50 hours. Some students do as many as 300 hours in a single school year. I like to say that I have the most fun lawyering job in the world. I get to work with students and alumni to provide free legal services and help those students build strong lawyering skills and habits they take into their careers. As a lawyer, an alumna, and a former teacher, I cannot tell you strongly enough what an immense privilege it is to see so many of our current students meet their very first legal client. No matter how nervous or excited they are, they approach each clinic and individual with thoughtfulness, empathy, and an eagerness to help. Supervising students is really more like coaching than teaching. 
Students process their learning outside of the pressures of grades or Socratic questioning and have immediate opportunities to debrief and ask questions with peers, attorneys, and the people we assist. Alumni are integral to supervising law student work. Often these are graduates of the pro bono program who are excited to keep working in the program and to help the next generation of students. I can't think of a bigger endorsement than new lawyers who have finally gotten out of law school and into great jobs wanting to volunteer their time for free to come back to the law school and stay connected with students and our program. We are so proud that the Midoff program inspires a commitment to a lifetime of service. Some of our pro bono projects include expunction and special education, both supervised in partnership with a robust group of Texas law alums. Some of our alumni take the models of delivering legal services at scale in law school to postgraduate fellowships and jobs where they continue to operate at scale, like our alum who created a statewide model for DACA applications and renewals. Other alumni gain postgraduate expertise and training and come back to start new projects with program attorneys and law student volunteers like driver's license recovery and the Medicaid Assistance Project. Some alums tap into existing projects connecting pro bono law students and attorneys, like the Bankruptcy Project, and others bring projects they volunteered with in law school to their firms or organizations. Pro bono projects build networks between students and alumni at various stages of our careers. Some partner attorneys have decades of experience, while others are just starting their careers. In supervising students, alumni model zealous, ethical, empathetic lawyering, and students practice their own lawyer voice and approach. We train students, but we trust their instincts and abilities. We position students to meet with clients and engage in real legal problem solving immediately. Pro bono volunteering allows students to practice as opposed to just studying lawyering skills with real implications from the first weeks they enter law school and throughout their three years on campus. Pro bono builds skills, confidence, and a great work ethic. For many students, like me when I was in law school, pro bono is an anchor connecting us to the reasons we came to law school. Pro bono gives tangibility and stakes to the hypotheticals we discuss in our classrooms. Pro bono allows students to explore and build expertise in different areas of the law. Volunteering with pro bono projects in law school builds the habit and the confidence to make pro bono service a linchpin of our careers. Pro bono participants come from every sector of the student population and go off to every sector of the legal profession. And nothing has changed in a world of Zoom classes and remote meetings. Our existing pro bono projects were able to transition to remote legal service delivery, and some new ones have been added. Technology is allowing us to meet folks where they are and eliminating potential barriers to providing legal services, such as travel or childcare. In fact, we now have alumni in Dallas and New York regularly supervising Zoom clinics from their homes. The Midoff program is the embodiment of our university motto, what starts here changes the world. If you could see it, you would be so proud of what today's students are doing to become better students, better lawyers, and better humans. If you'd like to be a part of it, please let us know. Until then, from me and everyone at the Midoff Pro Bono Program, have a great reunion and hook 'em horns. Hello, I'm Kathleen Overly, the Director of Judicial Programs here at Texas Law. My job is to help our students land judicial clerkships. This is a big and important effort to us. I hope it won't surprise you to learn that Texas Law is the number one school for judicial clerkships in all of Texas and in the Southwest. Every year, about 40 of our students clerk immediately after graduation. That's a lot more than any other law school in our region of the world. About half of those students will go to federal district courts, about 15% to US Circuit Courts of Appeals, and the remainder to state and local courts. Now, if you're not surprised by these strong numbers, and I suspect you aren't, you might be surprised to learn that the business of guiding students to clerkships has changed a lot from what you might remember as a law student. In fact, the existence of a staff role dedicated to clerkship advising may seem a bit more foreign. It used to be that clerkship advising was an organic process that emerged between faculty and students. Faculty would often raise the prospect of clerking with their most promising students and then work to make connections individually. Today, however, the landscape for clerkships and how to get them has evolved. Young lawyers are beginning to see the clerkship as an integral part of their legal career, and there's now a more structured timeline for applying to those clerkships. 
As such, Texas law believed a more structured approach to advising was required. For one thing, and this is a key reason why our clerkship numbers are as high as they are, there's the individual attention that we're able to give to all students who are interested in pursuing a clerkship. I want every student at Texas Law to know they are able to pursue a clerkship and the law school will support them if they choose to do so. I often joke that my job is to help students navigate building relationships with two groups of people who have life tenure, faculty and judges. Some students enter law school adept at doing this. Others, however, have to learn how to effectively network with these groups. I work to create an approachable clerkship program that provides access to clerkships across the student body and that begins to help level the playing field between the students who are the first lawyer in their family and those who may have been raised by parents who were professors and judges. These conversations start early in law school, even in the first year, and continue on with alumni who are pursuing clerkships after graduation. I believe the clerkship search is one that runs parallel to both your law school and your legal career. A term clerkship is rarely the final job a graduate has. Rather, it's a stepping stone to a new position, and it's my job to work with students to make sure the clerkship is a part of their longer-term career goals. So what does the program look like? During the first year, it's about introducing students to clerkships and giving broad information about what a clerkship is and how to prepare to be competitive. It's the most basic introduction designed to meet students where they are and is often followed by individual meetings with those students. During the second year, the real work begins. We bring in federal judges for programs with students and to have small group lunches with students. We discuss how to put together the proper resume, writing sample, and cover letter. We hold a robust mock interview program and arrange for multiple mock interviews when students need additional support. And we hold at least two individual counseling sessions with each clerkship applicant, often many more. In these sessions, we help students select recommenders, discuss where the students want to clerk, and have an in-depth conversation about how the clerkship fits within the student's career path. Another huge part of this is you, our alumni. It is in large part because of our alumni network that our students are able to secure the clerkships that they do. If you are a former clerk, you have no doubt been contacted by students to speak about your clerkship. It's often alumni judges on our panels and alumni participating in our mock interview program. The role that former clerks have in the success of our clerkship program is so very much appreciated. I could not do what I do without each of you. If you think you can help a student in a clerkship search, or if you're looking for a clerkship yourself, please reach out to me. Until then, have a great reunion. I'm Bobby Chesney. And I've been a professor here since 2008, teaching constitutional law to 1Ls, teaching national security and cybersecurity courses to the upper level students. And I've been your associate dean for academic affairs for pretty much the past decade. I'm from San Antonio, so is my wife. We love this state. We love this university. We love this school, just like y'all. So I'm very, very happy to report that your school is doing exceptionally well. In fact, I'd like to take a moment right now to talk a little bit more about a key part of life, Texas law, our curriculum. I like to talk to potential students about the courses we offer because it's an easy pitch to give. We have such a rich variety. I think of it as a best of both worlds model. We maintain our excellence in all the course subjects you remember, the traditional first year classes, wills and estates, oil and gas, of course, federal courts, conflict of laws, all the rest. Texas law is big enough to be able to respond to changing circumstances not by giving up on tried and true courses, but by complementing them to best ideas for innovative new ones. There's no single process for such changes, but I can paint a picture about how it often happens. So for one thing, we're always paying close attention to the evolving circumstances of today's lawyers and emerging areas of practice. And that's why hundreds of students every year now are able to take courses on negotiation skills, on financial concepts, financial methods, with very few exceptions, all lawyers need those skills, as you know. Yet at many schools, few students actually get them. We also stand out for providing more clinical opportunities than almost anyone, not to mention a stunning number of courses that qualify as experiential in other ways. All this is also why we've developed a nationally renowned portfolio of cybersecurity and data privacy courses. And it's why you'll find innovations in other parts of our curriculum like the commercial side of the space industry, the intersection of law and technology in the biopharma setting. Our curriculum is adapted also to the massive interest in civil rights issues, especially the challenging topics that connect race and the law. 
And so too, we increasingly reflect a similar wave of interest in topics like free speech, religious liberty. Sometimes our success with these innovations becomes part of the school's larger national reputation over time. That's happened, for example, with our remarkable variety of national security courses. Of course, we faculty and administrators, we're not the only ones who can spot the need for new courses. I'm especially proud of how Texas law can be responsive to ideas that come to us from the students themselves. It's not uncommon for a group of students to make impressive arguments presenting the case for the school to adopt some new course on a particular topic, something having to do with health law, a new innovation in labor law, technology, or maybe the combination of all those things. When this happens, we carefully consider the merits of the pitch, we consider the likelihood students will really sign up for such courses, and we do it with an innovation mindset. Success requires a willingness to try and to risk failure. That just comes with the territory. It's okay if sometimes those efforts don't pan out. So when we're persuaded something new is worth a shot, we'll go out and we'll recruit the best possible person to take on that course. Now, often that means coming to you, our wonderful graduates. Many of you already teach for us as adjuncts. We really love you for that. Our students do too. More often than not, these experiments work out great. We watch them closely because whether we're talking about our classic courses or innovative new ones, there's one thing we want to always remain constant, excellence in our teaching. Not all top law schools make that claim. Not all of them can make it with a straight face. We make the claim and we mean it. We always have, we always will. And that's something about our school that I'm very proud of and I know you share that. So we'll continue to uphold standards just as we continue to champion the distinctive Texas law model with its smart blend of both classic and innovative courses. That's Texas law for you, best of both worlds. We think this approach is the best way to ensure our graduates have a robust foundation in the knowledge and skills that have always defined what it means to be a lawyer, while also ensuring they're well prepared for today's practice environment, prepared and motivated, not just to succeed, but to excel in an increasingly diverse and rapidly evolving world. Of course, like Robert Earl Keane saying, the work is never done, but that's part of what makes it so fun to work here. So let me just say thank you for listening, but especially thank you for all you do for our school and for our students. Hook them. All right, I'm so glad that you had a chance to meet some of the great leaders of this law school, Kathleen, Matthew, Meg, and Bobby. They're all working so hard all the time to make this the greatest place in the world to be a law student, which is how I hope you remember it and how I hope our current students will remember it when they come back for their reunions. Now at noon, we're gonna have a continuing legal education event with the great Tracy McCormick. Hope to see you there. And in the meantime, we've got a lot of multimedia fun about to stream about the law school that I really hope you'll enjoy. Hook 'em horns. I'm a public interest student. My specialization will be some form of policy. I think I will be specializing in transactional law. My current plan is to join the Army, so my hope is to use my law degree to uh, serve my country. When I walk through these doors, I feel so privileged and excited to be here. I'm grateful to be able to learn legal principles from masters at their crowds. These professors are outstanding. I love seeing the one else come in and be so excited. They're, they know that it's about to start. I remember the horde of people walking to get our first presentation and our oath and our welcome. You're inches away, you can taste it, you can hear law school essentially. We're all here, all 300 of us are starting off in this journey together. I remember just that buzzing sense of energy that was filling everywhere. I couldn't even sleep the night before. I, I remember like it was yesterday. I was so excited that the place that I wanted to be also wanted me to be there. I felt like home. I felt like I was supposed to be here. What's really special about UT Law is absolutely the community here. I just want to do good work with good people, right? I want to be someone who is lining up my actions with my beliefs.
What a semester, a semester like none other before. In these difficult and uncertain times, we're doing everything we know how in circumstances that nobody would have chosen. And now, more than ever. Okay, yeah, it's been an unusual semester. Everything is harder, sometimes a lot harder. It's harder to work, everything is different. It's harder to learn. Harder to teach. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Property. The challenges are opportunities. There are no excuses at Texas Law. We get up every day ready for anything. Ready for adventure. Excited to do great work with amazing people. In spite of all the challenges, we're moving onward. Because that's who we are. And that's just how we do things around here. Onward for my students. Onward for this university. We're moving onward to be better than ever. Onward for Texas. Hook 'em. Hook 'em. Hook 'em. Hook 'em.
The lawyers that I admire most are the lawyers like the very young Thurgood Marshall who actually went in those little towns in the South and fought those battles for civil rights. They literally changed the law and it was one case at a time. So many people lack fundamental advantages to have equal opportunity in life. And I was brought up to use those advantages for the benefit of those that didn't have them. Nine people have an equal voice in deciding how to interpret the Constitution. Their values and what experiences they bring to the interpretation is what shapes the laws that govern us. When this is all over, the thing that I think will matter the most to me is how I was able, with the help of others, to make this profession better for those who come behind us. Whenever I come into the building, I can't imagine that I actually have the privilege to represent the folks of South Texas. My mission is to leave the state of Texas in a better position than it was before I got involved in public service. That's my entire mission. I couldn't have gotten to where I've gotten here today without the University of Texas School of Law. It's true, you know, what happens in Texas truly changes the world. Hello, welcome back to Austin and the University of Texas School of Law. We hope this virtual return to campus brings back good memories. You'll find some things have changed since you left the 40 acres. We've built new programs and buildings and welcome new faculty and of course, new students. But some things are exactly as you remember them, our unwavering spirit and our drive for excellence and justice. Let's start at Towns Hall home to our big first-year classrooms, our student lounge, and cafe. Towns Hall has a huge portrait gallery with paintings of past deans and illustrious alumni, such as Secretary of State James Baker, Senator Kay Bailey Hutchison, Texas Supreme Court Chief Justice Wallace Jefferson, and immediate past president of our alumni association, Arlise Upton Key. Down the hall are the six first-year classrooms, the first year class is typically divided into four sections of between 65 and 75 students. Texas Law has 95 full-time faculty with over 125 listed areas of specialty. That's a 10 to one student-faculty ratio. 
Towns Hall is also a hub of extracurricular activity, housing the offices of many of our student organizations, of which there are more than 40. Our affinity groups include CHILSA, TMLS, APALSA, the Asian Pacific American Law Student Association, OUTLAW, the LGBTQ Alliance, and the Women's Law Caucus. Texas Law has 13 law journals, and most have offices on the fourth floor of towns. Texas Law students also enjoy spending time in George's Cafe and the Tom Clark Lounge. George's, named for George Fleming, class of 1971, offers breakfast and lunch and plenty of space to stretch out. The Tom Clark Lounge, named for U.S. Supreme Court Justice Tom Clark, class of 1922, features a pool table, a Starbucks coffee and snack kiosk, vending machine, and plenty of space. Steps away from the lounge is the Sussman Godfrey Atrium, the main common area of our school. Here we also pay tribute to one of the most important figures in our history, and in the history of higher education, Heman Sweat, a civil rights pioneer. Just outside the atrium, you'll find Eduardo Rodriguez Way, named for a longtime alumnus leader and supporter of Texas law. For over 20 years, alumni and their families have gathered here for Eduardo's annual tailgate extravaganza. We're now in Jones Hall, home of the Tarleton Law Library and the Sussman Academic Center. Tarleton is one of the largest academic law libraries in the country. It has a staff of 32, including 10 librarians with JDs. Above the library is the Sussman Academic Center, housing more than 90 faculty offices as well as classrooms. A signature part of Texas law is experiential learning. That happens in the Connolly Center for Justice, or CCJ. We have 15 clinics and multiple internships. Students can work on immigration cases, criminal defense cases, capital punishment cases, and entrepreneurship projects, among many others. Students can observe live trials in our Eidman courtroom. CCJ is also home to the Richard and Ginny Mitoff Pro Bono Program, where Texas law students use their developing legal skills to address legal needs in the community and build a commitment to service. In fact, 90% of this year's entering class pledged to provide at least 50 hours of pro bono service before graduation. Upstairs is our Career Services Office, which hosts more than 500 law firm offices and organizations from New York, Los Angeles, and Washington, D.C., and everywhere in Texas to recruit our students. In fact, recent graduates practice in 137 cities, 41 states and D.C., and six countries. Texas law also boasts one of the premier judicial clerkship programs in the nation. Forty graduates obtain judicial clerkships every year in federal and state courts across the country. And Texas law is one of the top 12 law schools to place clerks on the U.S. Supreme Court. On behalf of the Texas Law Alumni Association, welcome back to the law school and happy reunion! You can always visit our website for a more in-depth look at your law school. And we hope to see you on campus soon. Hook 'em horns. All right, wonderful graduates. Welcome back, even virtually. I am greeting you in my capacity as the world's luckiest dean, dean of your law school, Ward Farnsworth. Now, if you're watching this, you might have graduated from this place 50 or 60 years ago, maybe five or 10 years ago. So I'm gonna to try to talk about things that have changed over the years, things that haven't, things that'll be familiar to some of you and things that some of you will find new. The first thing I have to do is just comment on what a year it's been. It's really been a year of extraordinary challenges to this community, just as it has been, I'm quite sure, in whatever community you're in professionally and personally. But I must tell you, I am so impressed and so grateful for the way this law school community has responded to these conditions. Overall, there have been countless instances of students stepping up for each other, being helped by faculty, and being helped by our alumni. Unlike a lot of law schools, we've continued to offer a lot of courses in person, as well as remotely, always giving students the option of being there in person with mask on or taking the class from home. Even the indefatigable Stanley Johansson insisted on teaching in person. 
This has allowed us to provide our students with some very special experiences this year that students at other schools haven't had the same chance to have. In general, our goal has been to step up for our students at this time and give them an experience better than they could get anywhere else. We gave every one of our incoming first year students an assignment to a faculty mentor, so no faculty member had more than four or five students assigned to them. And every student had a faculty member who was keeping an eye on them and who they were getting to know, even if they couldn't come hobnob up at the podium at the front of the room after class. In addition to that, we've had alumni stepping up for students as mentors. Some of you uh, have done that. We've had special effort made by our student affairs office and by our career services office to help students through the strangeness of the job market under these conditions. It's been a tough year, but it's been a year when the school has really, I think, shown its great strengths. And I'm very thankful to all of you for the generosity of time and resources that so many of you have shown to help us get through this period. Now, to talk a little more generally about recent developments at the law school. If you haven't been here in a long time, there's some differences in what you'd see physically and some differences in what you'd see the students learning and doing. Let me start with the learning and doing. Compared to a few decades ago, one thing you'd notice is the school's smaller. So many of you were here when there were five or even 600 students in a graduating class. These days, the number's closer to 300. That's really not a number driven by a desire to be any one size or the other. It's a number driven by our insistence just on being excellent and having the highest standards that we've ever had for admissions so that we continue to turn out graduates who are at the very top of the profession and talent, graduates who hopefully all of you are very eager to hire. It's also a place now where we give more individual attention to those students. They're all in first year societies and mentor groups. They're all assigned second and third year students as mentors. They're all taking classes on legal writing in groups of 25 or 30, all taught by full-time professional writing instructors, usually our own graduates, teaching them how to do that thing that I consider the very most important skill of all. Most of our students take a clinic before they graduate. Some of you had the pleasure of doing that before you graduated. Some of you went here at a time before we had so many clinics. But we now have 16, the most recent of which is part of a new First Amendment center we've opened. That's a very important thing to me the ability to engage in free speech with one another about the hardest topics, I consider that one of the most pressing issues of our times and something that I want all of our graduates to specialize in. One of the projects of our First Amendment Center is a clinic on religious liberty that gives our students a chance to represent plaintiffs who are in schools or prisons from all different sorts of backgrounds and their beliefs or non-beliefs, representing them in their quest for religious liberty. It's a new chance for our students to learn how to do things that are really going to make a difference for them when they get out into the world and it's time to be a lawyer. All right, if you were in the building, walking around, what would you see that's different? Well, for one thing, the Sussman Godfrey Atrium at the center of the law school is a little different than you may remember it. Some of you went here before the atrium existed, but most of you have seen it. And you may remember it for its wood paneling, so redolent of a 1970s rec room. Uh, we phased out that paneling and instead of exposed what was once the exterior wall of Towns Hall, had it uh, blasted and clean and it's now very beautiful. The, the, the atrium in general is now very well lit and is a beehive of student activity and socializing that you can come enjoy seeing any day of the week during the school year. In addition, imagine walking from the student lounge or the Sheffield Massey room to the first year classrooms. Imagine walking outdoors through a breezeway through which I'm sure all of you passed many, many dozens of times. When you go through that breezeway, there are spaces to your right and to your left. And historically, those spaces are a great location that's never been used as much by students as we all would have liked. So thanks to wonderfully generous gifts from the Patman family and the D. Kelly family, we're renovating those spaces and turning them into magnificent areas for student life with slats that'll keep it shady and fans provided by the big ass fan company, which I'm assured is very aptly named. We're very excited to have these spaces uh, available for use this fall. And if you wanna know one silver lining in this whole dreadful pandemic has been the chance to do some very loud construction at the law school in these spaces without disturbing anybody. Above all, our goal was to make this the best place in the world to be a law student. That's our aspiration all the time. 
And what I really want you to know is what a difference you, our graduates, make in our ability to deliver on that promise. When you went to law school here, I know it was less expensive than it is now, but I also know that most of you can comfortably say you got the greatest deal in the history of American legal education, and our goal is to be able to keep saying that. Tuition's more expensive than it used to be, and the state provides a much smaller share of it than it used to. Nevertheless, in-state tuition here is still about half of what tuition is at most of our peer law schools, and that enables us to bring extraordinary students to this law school who could have gone elsewhere, and it enables us to position those students to go off and do great things with their lives because they are not encumbered with the kind of crushing debt that students at so many other law schools struggle with. That, to me, is the center of our mission, providing our students with a first-rate education and elite opportunities without top-tier debt. And I just want to thank all of you who have helped us make that dream come true for so many of our students.